like to announce <laughs> that today was a terrific day. Oh, and I have your martini already. I guess you'd rather skip it. The day wasn't that terrific. <laughs> hmm, the perfect wife. Hot lips and cold martinis. <laughs> Hey, I didn't know you two still went in for that sort of thing. Why are you always sneaking around the house? I can't help it if I'm around when you're smooching. And why aren't you doing your homework? I am. I'm studying anatomy. Well, that's a magazine. It's cosmopolitan. Well... <laughs> You know, we're really in trouble. <laughs> when a man will pose like that, covered by only two staples. <laughs> Nothing could spoil this day. It's something of a, of a milestone. I think I finally found our genius son-in-law a job. There's many a slip between the cup and the lip. Speaking of lip, how would you like a really big, fat one? Howie. Hi, everybody. Hi, honey. Uh, Howie. Oh, oh, Howie. Howie! Those two are in a rut. Howie, well, how do you like your new job? Well, I didn't start today. Oh, you start tomorrow? Not exactly. You, you didn't get the job, did you? Well, that's not exactly accurate either. How not exactly accurate is it? Not getting the job implies I wasn't qualified for the newspaper. Actually, that newspaper doesn't qualify as the kind of employer I feel I can work for, Dad. My name is Mr. Sams. <laughs> When you're working, you can call me dad. <laughs> what happened? Bill Martin promised me no matter what you said, he'd hire you. Howie, what did you say? That newspaper is filled with nothing but rapes, murders, and gossip. And, and that's what you said to Bill Martin? <laughs> yes. You sure know how to make a man break his promise. <laughs> it's against my ecological principles to press trees into pulp to print that pap. And it's against my principles to listen to that sap running out of your trap. <laughs> Your father's about to use establishment words. <laughs> Daddy, you can't expect a man like Howie to take a job that goes against his moral convictions. I think something's burning in the kitchen. It's in here and it's me. <laughs> Must you always race me to the phone? Hello? Oh, hi, Sarah Jean. Sign off. It's dinner time. No kids. Right here in Ocean Grove? Yeah. Yeah, just a minute, I'll ask. Daddy, can I go see an all-nude show? What? <laughs> it's called Old Bombay. They're doing it at the Civic Auditorium. Can I go Saturday night? Positively not. <laughs> Why? It isn't a school night. <laughs> Sarah Jane, get back to your centerfold. <laughs> A nude show at the Civic. I can't believe it. What I can't believe is the mayor allowing it. He knows what the people of this city want. Yeah, good seats on opening night. <laughs> I haven't spanked you in a long time. But you're asking for it. I'm meeting with the mayor tomorrow in my office on that zoning matter. I'll ask him about it. Uh, the mayor is coming to your office? What's so strange about that? Well, the mayor is a rather important person. So is your husband. Outside of this house. <laughs> Congratulate you for the way you handled the zoning problem. The city didn't even have to go to court. Our firm was proud to save Ocean Grove the money, Mayor. That way our legal fees can be higher. <laughs> I'd like to say something, Mayor. You're, you're coming over here to my office. I, I think that takes a big man. Uh, no, it takes a toothache. Your pardon. <laughs> my dentist is in this building and I had an appointment with him today. <laughs> Now, may I interrupt you for a moment? You just did, Alice. 
Well, Mayor uh, Schofield's secretary just called. Mr. Mayor, there's a big crisis down at Pacific Auditorium. She says the director of Old Bombay refuses to continue with the rehearsal until the city turns the heat on in the auditorium. We never turn on the heat during rehearsal. Well, it's too expensive. But the cast is nude. And they're catching cold. What shall I say? time. <laughs> Well, tell them I'll get back to them at the end of the day. In the meantime, tell them to keep their shirts on. <laughs> Mayor, I can't understand your attitude. When you ran for office, you promised us a clean city. I was referring to the streets. <laughs> I think the stage should be as clean as the streets. If I found an ordinance or a loophole that would close that show, would you uh, take any action? Come on, Paul. There are nudes in the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Why can't we have a few at the Civic? The nudes in the Sistine Chapel don't wiggle while you watch. <laughs> Let's see, municipal codes. Municipal. Ah, here we are. <laughs> snap them naked, you'll have to buy some tickets like everybody else. Are you insinuating I'm peeping? Peeping and, uh, <laughs> snapping. Hey, you have no right to ruin that film. There's, there's a picture of my wife on that road. If you want to snap her in a nude, you can snap her at home. I wasn't taking pictures of nude women. Nude boys? the office and stop acting like Billy Sunday. JJ, how did you know I was here? Your confidential secretary told me. <laughs> Looks like that's a little overexposed. You want to see something really overexposed? <laughs> Look inside. Paul, I, the mayor just said you're looking for an ordinance to close old Bombay. And I can do it, too. Oh, Hold oh. it. Do you know who's producing this show? Some feeble-minded sex maniac. Right. The mayor's brother-in-law. <laughs> you're making such a big deal about a little thing like nudity. You have a son. You wouldn't take this so lightly if you had a 14-year-old daughter. Well, what's the difference? <laughs> if you don't know the difference, how'd you ever become a father? Mom, how we found a job. How wonderful. And I only have to work a couple of hours a night. Oh, tell her the big news. He'll be making $200 a week. Two hundred. For a part-time job? Your father will be delirious. What's the job? I'm replacing the actor who plays the bartender in O'Bombay. <laughs> Hi, honey. Hi, sweetheart. That's real surface. Martinis at the pool. I thought you might like one. Or maybe two before you go inside. I could use two. J.J. convinced me of something. I have to accept nudity as part of today's living. You couldn't have picked a better time. You're right. My job was at stake. Uh, Paul, speaking of jobs, Howie has one. Now we have something to celebrate. You might want to celebrate a lot. What, what kind of job is it? It pays $200 a week. $200? Yes. Uh, well, there are a couple of things you ought to know about this If he's job. working and making $200 a week, I don't have to know anything more. It's not an ordinary job. Well, is it honest? I mean, he isn't pushing pot. 
no, no, it, it's perfectly honest. It, it doesn't interfere with his studies, and he only has to work a couple of hours a night. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he had good stuff in him. I'm going to congratulate him. Uh, uh, Paul! <laughs> Everybody in the theater can hear you. <clears throat> Here you are, a vodka gimlet, Miss Thorndike. <laughs> what do you think, honey? I don't know, Howie. I think you'd be more believable as a bartender if you were wearing a uniform. <laughs> Howie? I just heard about the job. Congratulations. Thanks, Mr. Sims. Dad. <laughs> But son, I, I still wish you wouldn't come into the living room just in your trunks. Somehow it seems indecent. I'm not wearing trunks. Oh, good. Now, what kind of job did... <laughs> what was that again? I'm not wearing trunks. You mean you don't have anything? <laughs> There's nothing between you and... How is rehearsing? Rehearsing. <laughs> I'm playing a small part as a bartender in O'Bombay, Dad. Mr. Sands. <laughs> or better yet, don't call me anything at all. I'd rather not admit I know you. <laughs> Hi, stranger. Daddy, you're the one who's been bugging him about getting a night job. Not as a bottomless bartender. <laughs> I was shocked, too, at first. It just takes a little getting used to. I have to get used to it myself. I am not going to stand here and debate with a nudie loony. <laughs> now throw my coat around you and go put your clothes on. Why? Because we have a box? Hey, let me out, Dad! She, she has homework to do. You knew how he had a job in O'Bombay. Paul, have a martini. Have a martini, have a martini. By Thursday, I won't have a liver. <laughs> Martha, why didn't you tell me about this? She wanted to get you bombed first. Upstairs, upstairs. <laughs> Do you know he's standing behind that bar, naked? <laughs> well, it certainly seems that way. <laughs> But seeing is believing. Hey, stop! <laughs> Don't be lewd. I'm a married woman. To me, not him. Just as I thought. How we come out from behind that bar this minute? <laughs> you said you didn't have your trunks on. I don't. I have my shorts on. <laughs> Oh, they're going to drop a net over him. <laughs> you deliberately misled me. You let me think you were naked. And when you thought that, I was immoral and immodest. But with my shorts on, I'm as proper as you, right? Wrong. I wouldn't be caught dead in candy striped shorts. Howie's wearing shorts to gradually get used to the idea of total nudity. Martha. Your son-in-law is going to stand on that stage in front of the whole town in his birthday suit. That's how man began in his birthday suit. He only invented clothes because the winters were cold. And the bushes were thorny! Shut that door in your mouth! You're not gonna perform in that bare-bottom bonanza. I forbid it. You're doing it just to embarrass me. Daddy, you're only worried about being embarrassed. You don't care about freedom. Mr. Sims, you don't understand Yes, me. I do. You're nuts. <laughs> It's just that everybody should have the freedom to do his own thing. The Supreme Court upheld nudity in the case of the city of Nogales versus the producers of flesh and bone. Oh, don't pull the Supreme Court on me. What do you expect from nine dirty old men? <laughs> Let's go upstairs, Martha. Well, Martha, don't you have anything to say about this? Mm-hmm. Bottoms up. Don't say that. tell you, this whole family's disintegrating. We can't let our daughter's husband appear nude in that show. Unless he's willing to resign as our daughter's husband. What can we do? I'll, I'll, get it. I'll go see about dinner. Hello, Paul. 
Just dropped in on my way home to thank you. For, for what? Uh, for that martini you're about to give me. Oh. I know you couldn't finish it all by yourself. <laughs> Don't bet on that. <laughs> your good judgment today. J.J. told me about your change in attitude. Oh, uh, that? Well, I, I didn't uh, really uh, have any... Uh... Paul, you won't be sorry. I've always believed that one hand washes the other, and I have enough soap to take care of your firm for a long time. Mayor Schofield, as the responsible mayor of this city, you'll be interested to learn that I found a city ordinance that will close Obambe. There is no such thing. Oh, really? What about 234B of the city code? Uh, that ordinance only applies to indecent exposure on public beaches. Exactly. The Civic Auditorium is on pilings over the beach. So the moment those actors come on stage nude, you grab them. Bye. Jack, are you going to change your mind about tomorrow? Uh, later, Barbara. Much later. I know how you feel about old Bombay, but how will you be a lot happier if your mom could go and see him in the dress rehearsal? <laughs> Thanks, Barbara. Now you can go back to your lair. Well, Mr. Civic Pride, I see you have a pornographic son-in-law. That has nothing to do with it. It's my integrity. Paul, you're going to make the news media big. I can just hear the newscaster at 7 o'clock. The law firm of McNish and Sims have found an ordinance to close Old Bombay, but not in the public interest, but because Paul Sims has a nudie son-in-law. <laughs> Why would a newscaster say a thing like that? Uh, possibly because he's my nephew. Uh, black uh, No, no, no. I just want to keep the public completely informed. I don't want any communication gap in my opinion. My suggestion, Paul, is leave the show open and close down your son-in-law. <laughs> right, I'll drop by tomorrow with my nephew and we'll tape an interview. You know, me uh, congratulating you on how you handle the zoning case. It's been pleasant rapping with you. Thank you for the martini, and uh, keep the faith. What are you thinking about, dear? Uh, uh, just daydreaming. Uh, uh, about what? Thinking how nice it would be to get Howie and the mayor together as stowaways on the next moon launch. <laughs> with you. No kidding. How come? Well, uh, your father has proven to be more open-minded than I thought. It must have been your speech on freedom that got to him. Honey, we better get going. I don't want to be late for the performance. That's right. You barely have time to get to the theater to take your clothes off. <laughs> oh, I'm ready. Let's go. your father was going to lend you moral support. But you don't have any shoes or pants on. That's to go with the shirt and shorts that don't have on. Daddy, are you out of your mind? No, just my clothes. <laughs> if he can be nude on stage, then why can't I be nude in the audience? It takes one to watch one, right, my brother? <laughs> right, Dimples. <laughs> You're going to sit there naked. Why, you're going with your husband to the theater, and he's going to be naked. But you're different than Howie. I mean, you're respectable. <laughs> I didn't mean that way it sounded, honey. That's okay. But don't worry, your dad's just bluffing. Not at all. I'm just going along with your idea of freedom. But, Daddy, what are my friends going to say? That's one of the problems of total freedom. <laughs> but like Howie says, he has the right to do his own thing. And so do I. Mother, is he serious? Well, I don't know. He's got blood in his eye. He's just putting us on. <laughs> oh, really? Want to try me? You won't work, Dad. You wouldn't even step out of this house wearing just that top coat. You're wrong. I'll even step out of this house without this top coat. <laughs> Sims. He's wearing shorts. Oh, yeah? It's finally happened. Your father's brain broke. Oh, my 
it's good. <laughs> good grief, it's the mayor. Paul, oh, it's nice to see you. Paula. Get out, buddy. There, well, what, what, what are you doing here? And, and who's that with you? Uh, this is my nephew, the news guy. If, if, uh, uh, if we hurry, we are trying to make the 7 o'clock news. Or have you reconsidered your stand on uh, nudity? Do you have to ask? <laughs> Paul, when you change your point of view, you don't get around, do you? Thanks to you, Howie, this family now has two nudie loonies. <laughs> to quitting old Bombay, but you still embarrass the mayor into closing the show. Have you lost your mind? What I lost, J.J., was my integrity. But I got it back. Well, something we'll never get back is any of the city's legal business. I tried to apologize to the mayor all morning, but the lines were tied up. We can get along without the city's legal business, J.J. But I can't get along without my wife who thinks I can get along without you. Oh, oh mayor, mayor. J.J.? I uh, tried to get in touch with you all morning. I had nothing to do with this. He's the one with the integrity. I know that. Yeah, he's going to be laughing all the way to a new law firm. Paul, I want to thank you. Well, Mayor, that's big of you, considering your brother-in-law lost the show. Ah, uh, but we got a couple of hundred calls congratulating me for closing down the show and living up to my promise to have a clean city. Uh, integrity pays off. Every time. Why, it's the credo of McDishon Sims. Why, it's, it's our specialty. Isn't that right, Paul? All right, J.J. Let's go in your office. I have some legal matters I think will be right down your alley. I'll be right with you, Mayor. Oh, now, Paul, I, uh, I was just kidding about that other law firm. Oh, really? Well, what's, what's happened to your sense of humor, Paul? You go to another, another law firm? That just isn't possible. Wrong, J.J. In fact, I've been giving serious thought to making another affiliation. What? Well, Paul, Paul, you, you wouldn't do that after all these years. What, what, it wouldn't be fair. J.J., what happened to your sense of humor? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, bye. No. <laughs> <laughs> In last week's episode of Soap, Mary decided to try to work things out with Bert, even though he killed her first husband. 